What's up everyone and welcome to the first tournament breakdown of the Madden 19 competitive season. This year we're going to be kicking it off with the Mutthead League Season 5 champion Sirius Mo, who we did not get to feature last year despite him being a household name in the Madden community. Let's take a look at how he claimed the three-peat in the Mutthead League. To start things off, despite Madden 19 ushering in a completely new gameplay experience, the first major tournament of the season was once again captured by the ever-prevalent Gun Bunch offense. Taking a look at Moe's playbooks, it would appear that he was running both the West Coast book on offense along with the Detroit Lions book on defense. Defensively, he primarily stuck with both dollar and nickel 335 odd, largely favoring a two deep shell look with DB Fire 2 press. From there, his main mix ups were to go to three deep looks such as cross three fire press and cover three sky press, although with the vast amount of preplay adjustments, it wasn't always as vanilla as just being two deep or three deep coverage. In fact, it really hardly ever was. Uh, this culminated with him allowing only 4.57 yards per play on the defensive side of the ball and accruing 19 sacks along with 4 interceptions. 13 of those sacks and 2 of those interceptions came by way of DB Fire 2 Press, where he allowed less than 4 yards per play for over 37% of his play calls. On the offensive side of the ball, he made his living through the air. As most gun bunch offenses tend to do, especially West Coast bunches, he ended up going 30 for 45 for 638 yards, compiling 7 touchdowns and, what might be the most important part, 0 interceptions for a passer rating of 149.31. One caveat is that we were not able to see his first round matchup with Chaos aside from the very end, uh, but his full games against Blocky, Drag, and True Boy are all accounted for. On the ground, he at least made an effort to keep the defense honest, rushing 34 times for 84 yards and a pedestrian 2.47 yards per carry. With Mo, the ground game seemed more about staying on schedule and setting himself up for manageable second and third downs rather than trying to make a living with it. Shown here is a full list of plays that Mo ran along with how much he called them and how effective they were. The interesting thing jumping from Madden 18 to Madden 19 West Coast Gun Bunch is that there are major differences now in the most popular plays from the formation. Mostly gone are the corner strikes and dig halfback outs of the world, and in are plays like stick and verticals, which mostly got zero play at all last year, and really nobody batted an eye at. The main constant from last year to this one is the relevancy of mesh post, which remains one of the best all-around plays in the formation, and probably in the entire game. Let's take a look at how Mo navigated this offense to a championship. Here we have a sequence from his quarterfinal matchup with Blocky. Mo is in a bad down and distance of 2nd and 13. In this scenario, most players would try to get it all back in one play and go for something near the first down marker. Mo decides to play it safe and go with a stick setup reminiscent of last year's corner strike. The main reason that you're seeing stick more this year rather than corner strike is because of the corner route's angle on the right side of the field. Corner strike's angle was changed and is now much more obtuse in that it goes farther upfield whereas the stick corner is almost a 90 degree cut towards the sideline like last year's version of corner strike. In this case, post snap we see Blocky sends some pressure off the right edge and looks to have a cloud flat on the right side. Mo makes the simple read, takes what the defense gives him, and makes it a third and manageable. On the very next play, Mo now goes to mesh post. With a manageable down and distance situation, every route on the play is now a viable target as opposed to if he had tried to take a shot on 2nd and 13 and were to come up empty handed. Blocky seems to go with a similar defensive setup where he finds himself really in a no-win situation, having to choose between covering the post or the drag. He chooses the lesser of two evils and forces Mo to check it down to the drag, where he's able to easily convert for a new set of downs. Now, the reason I chose that sequence to look at is that it tells a good story of how Mo played offense throughout this tournament. If we go even deeper and take a look at his play calls by down, we can see that his most called plays on first down didn't even include his two most called plays overall, gun bunch verticals or mesh post. Rather, on first down, he mostly ran safe runs such as the halfback draw or gun doubles inside zone, or went with a simple passing concept like stick, which is centered around taking what the defense gives you and not setting yourself behind early. On second and third down, he showed that he is much more likely to bring out stuff like mesh post and verticals and put you in a bind where you have to pick between playing underneath or over the top with your user. He was afforded this luxury because of how he played on first down and generally gave himself a good situation to work with. Taking an even deeper dive into the personnel in which Mo looked to target on offense, he vastly favored targeting his wide receivers which is generally what you see from Gun Bunch due to the variety of max protection setups in which both the halfback and tight end are blocking. However, his one target to his halfback lands him at last in terms of the other competitors and how many times they like to target their backs out of the backfield. 
If we look at a breakdown of the routes that Mo mainly threw, it shows his offensive philosophy even further. The most common routes he threw, being seams, drags, and flats, shows that he was often looking to take what the defense gave him and set himself up for success in the next downs to come. The seam routes were generally quick high point throws to a receiver from the gun bunch side uh, when his opponent was not respecting the possibility of a quick throw. However, this philosophy does not really match up with Moe's average depth of target, which was over 18 yards downfield. What this reflects is that although Moe often was willing to nickel and dime his way down the field, when he decided to take a shot, he was taking a shot very far downfield. This would pay off for him several times where he was able to haul in long touchdowns in several games, pretty much against every opponent from all the way from his quarterfinal matchup with Baki to his finals matchup against True Boy. Well, with that, this is going to wrap up our look at how Sirius Moe was able to run the gauntlet and win Season 5 of the Mutthead League, giving himself a three-peat for the season. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, take it easy.